Hey friends, welcome back to Beer and Beauty. It's Kasha here. So today's video is going to be like a get ready with me kind of video, but it actually kind of turned out to be very tutorially. It's going to be a video about the look that I'm wearing, which is also a look that I'm going to be wearing for my sister's wedding tomorrow. I'm going to be the maid of honor, and in this video I'm going to show you how I got this look. Uh, today, as I'm shooting this video, is actually going to be the rehearsal dinner, so I figured I'd try out the look that I'm going to be wearing for the wedding and I'll show, record it and show it to you guys too so you, have, so you guys have a little bit of a sense of what it's like to do a bridal makeup. I use a lot of the things, a lot of the tips and tricks that I use when I do bridesmaids makeup or like maid of honor makeup or even brides makeup like depending on what the needs are for different people. It's a lot of the same techniques that I would use in those situations that I used on my face today. A look that's supposed to be very glowy and beautiful and romantic and just kind of classic and timeless. But it's also centered around this red bold lip, which I'm wearing the red lip because my dress is red, so I'm matching it to the dress. The eyes came out a lot more glamorous and smoky than I, and you know, statement than I thought, but color wise it's still pretty neutral compared to the lip. So I think it matches really nicely. I think this is a very glamorous look. And I also share a lot of tips and tricks for getting your makeup to last and just kind of to get it to look smooth um, and not too much. And you know, just tips and tricks having to do with bridal makeup. So if that sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. If you're, if you're interested in learning some tips and tricks about bridal makeup, keep on watching. But first, before we get into it, <laughs> let me introduce our libation of the day. It's the same day I'm shooting this as I posted my last video, which is going to be my morning skincare routine. So I'm still drinking the same wine, and today's libation of the day is from the winery Les Sengal Côte de Provence. Oh man, it's a rosé. It's a classic Provencal rosé. But yeah, let's go over the notes of this wine yet again. So let me take a little sip. And it's a wine that is everything that I want out of a, out of a Provencal rosé. It's dry, it's light, it's refreshing. It's not sweet at all. The wine that I tried in one of my other uh, videos like, was like a different rosé from Provencal. It was a little bit sweeter. This one's much more dry, but still not as dry as a red wine. It's just like a, a the most perfect in between between a white wine and a red wine, but it's not a it's not a sweet wine. If you're not somebody that's into sweet wines, I, I encourage you to try out some Provencal rosés. You know, a lot of people think that rosés are just always sweet, always for girls. I, I learned to love rosés when I studied abroad in the south of France, and I always had dry rosés because that's what they specialize in this in the south of France, in the Côte de Provence, as it says right here. I'm also kind of thinking that it's strange that this rosé doesn't really have much of a name, but uh, yeah, it's delicious and beautiful, and that's it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video, which starts now. Okay, let's do this. So I guess we're going to start off this look with a little bit of primer. I've had this little Hourglass Mineral Veil sample of a primer kicking around for a while. I'm going to be using an Hourglass foundation today, so I figured... Let's see how nicely they play together. Smoothing that all over. And like my feel, my skin feels like it doesn't have any issues right now. Like I don't need to add brightness or, or I don't think it has any blemishes. It doesn't even feel particularly dry. So I feel like this mineral primer is going to be great. What I'm looking for right now is just kind of longevity. I just want my makeup to last all day. So that is what that primer is for. Maybe give my skin a little bit of nourishment. I like to use the primer to kind of help my makeup last longer. And I guess we're gonna go ahead and jump into eyes. So I'll, I'm gonna use my MAC Paint Pot and Soft Ochre to prime my eyelids with. I think this is in my product pan, but I've barely used it. No way I'm gonna hit pan on this. Well, actually, I tend to do a lot more makeup in the second part of the year. So who knows? Maybe I'll use a ton more from here on in. And this look is gonna have a bold lip, so I'm gonna try to keep the eye look a little bit less colorful. I'm thinking I really would like to use my Lorac palette, and I'm gonna use this like rose color right in here. 
I feel like that would be a nice rosy, but still kind of neutral shimmer I can use that will complement the my red lip that I am planning on having. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and grab a fluffy brush and set my eyelid first. Now I don't set my entire eyelid, I just kind of set the brow bone and the transition area a little bit. Oh, I shouldn't really pluck. Mm, I guess I'm gonna pluck a little bit. Stand by. <laughs> okay, so my eyebrows are a little bit more uh, polished now. I'm just uh, smoothing that shade out with a little bit of um, tempera. My Modern Renaissance kind of pan this palette. This is also something that's in my product pan, as well as the palette that I am actually gonna use. I think I'm gonna use little bit of golden ochre and burnt orange as my kind of transition shades. I've definitely had this palette for over six months now so I'm kind of just curious to see how long lasting this palette still is, like how quality the shadows still are. Like I feel like perhaps because they are a little bit on the older side they won't be as long lasting as they once were but I'm gonna play with fate a little bit today, specifically to find that out. So I'm gonna mix these two colors together and then... So far so good. I'm gonna take a flat brush, like this Luxie one right there, and I'm gonna pick up the rose color and put it all over my lids. Now that is really pretty, speaking of rose, Let's have ourselves a sip. I'd like that shimmer to have a tiny little bit more oomph. So I think I'm gonna use one of the shimmers in my Huda Beauty Nude Palette. I'm gonna use a little bit of the color called Crave. Same flat brush, I'm just gonna put it on top. And that is pretty. So now I'm gonna deepen up my the outer V of the eye. I feel like I'll mix a little bit of taupe and sable out of the Lorac One palette. I'm gonna use a little this like small Luxie brush to kind of get in there nicely. It's coming out surprisingly cool toned. Usually not the way my eye looks come out. I'm gonna put a little bit of light brown to kind of uh, diffuse it into the crease a little bit better. I feel like that feels very pretty, but I want it to be a little warmer. <laughs> if you want some warm tone neutrals, you will you could do much worse than use the Jaclyn Hill palette. Like, there's a bunch of nice warm neutrals in there, so I might kind of try to warm up the eye with a little bit of one of these colors. I'm gonna take a tiny little little Cosette brush and I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of depth right near the lash line on the outer V. Now, I think I want my eye to be a tiny bit more bam pow, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit of this steel of Glitter on it. This is in the shade Kitten Karma. It's nice and champagne-y pinky, pinky champagne-y. I feel like that would be perfect. Pop it right in the center of the lid. I feel like that's gonna be pretty. So next up, I suppose I'm gonna add a little bit of eyeliner just cause I feel like that's gonna pull the look together a little bit more. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of my uh, Makeup Forever. I've got almost none left, but this, this is the Make Makeup Forever Aqua XL pencil. I love this for bridal because it's so waterproof. It's probably the most black and most waterproof eyeliner out there. come in together and I feel like I'm starting to look pretty naked without brows so neck brows is next I've been trying to pan dip brow um, pomade that I have from Anastasia just because I already have a backup I've been making some progress this is also something that's also in my project pan start of the, the year this was complete or like completely full like there wasn't even a divot into it and I feel like I've been using it quite a bit I could probably use it more. It's, uh, who knows if I'm actually gonna reach pan on this. 
by the end of the year, but yeah. I'm gonna use a little bit of my uh, Anastasia number 12 brow brush. I don't usually like to use pomades for bridal looks as I feel like it can be a little bit too intense, but I'm using a nice clean brush. I'm gonna go in with a light hand. Hopefully I can get it to be not too intense. I'm gonna try to smooth out nicely. I don't know what the deal is, but my NYX pencil is like bleeding like crazy. So I'm not gonna use it right now because I don't want to ruin my makeup look so far. I'm gonna try this Ico one that I just got in my Ipsy bag. It's a felt liner, which is not my favorite, but let's try it. The shape of the wing is fine, but to get close to my lash line, get a hair-like tip. Not bad. I feel like that is a pretty good little wing liner. Really concerned about my NYX liner. Look how badly that's bleeding. I couldn't possibly put that on my eyes. See all the little bleeding lines? Like that is inappropriate. Like that's not, not very cool, man. So I guess next up we'll go ahead and get into eyes. I have a little bit of fallout, but not too much. Like that's an ignorable amount of fallout, but I might try to clean it up anyway. One of my favorite ways to clean up fallout um, is to take a silicone-based primer, such as the Smashbox Photo Finish. This one's actually the best for this method. Just put it onto a little disposable sponge like that and smooth it underneath. Um, basically use it like a little magic eraser to clean up where you want to clean up any fallout. It works like a charm. It doesn't really move around what's going on underneath either. Just to make things move a little bit smoother, I like to do the eyes first just in case, especially if I'm planning to use glitter, which I kind of was. Just cleaning up that fallout a little bit. Okay, so we're ready to move on to face. I'm gonna be doing my favorite full coverage makeup combination. This is a method that I kind of picked up and I'm stealing from Jaclyn Hill, but I'm mixing the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation with the Dior Forever Skin Foundation. I feel like together they just make my skin look so beautiful. Not too dry, but still very full for co full coverage, a little bit dewy, like it's a beautiful combo. So um, I've got two colors here. I got warm ivory and vanilla, and I'm going to mix them according to my needs. Yeah, vanilla is a little bit light. I put this one in the center part of my face. Then I put the warm ivory on the other parameters of my face. That one's a little bit closer to my skin tone. Get a little bit of a tan there. I'm not gonna put it on too, too much because I am planning on putting even more foundation on after. But first I gotta smooth this out. Using like a dense foundation brush to just kind of smooth that out. That actually looks really pretty on its own. But you know, I'm going all in today. I'm doing a full like bridal makeup routine today. Test out what things are gonna look like. So now I'm gonna go in with the Dior Skin Foundation in the shade 20 which is probably gonna be a little bit on the light side for me. So then I'm gonna move, mix in a little bit of the shade 31 as well. But for cameras, if you're planning on getting your picture taken, it, it's good to go like maybe even just a stop darker or just, you know, go in a little bit heavy handed with your bronzer just cause camera flashes tend to paler than you actually are. So I like to go in with a little bit of depth in my foundation routine for situations where you're gonna get your picture taken. Another paradigm to consider and be concerned about when it comes to bridal makeup is that like cakey makeup looks good on camera. It may not look that good in real life, but it looks good on camera. Where's my sponge? So I'm just gonna blend that in with my beauty blender. Cakier, like cakey makeup looks really nice on camera. It doesn't appear cakey on camera because the flash from cameras tend to kind of like flatten out your complexion a little bit. And it's, it's actually beneficial to have like a nice thick foundation on when you're getting your pictures taken. But, you know, really sheer, really luminous foundation looks really pretty in real life. So the goal with brighter makeup is just kind of to find that balance, you know. You want to look really pretty uh, 
up close when you know you gotta give pe like all your family members kisses and say hello to everybody and you wanna you wanna look pretty there but you also wanna look pretty in the pictures you know the memories are gonna last a lifetime but so are the pictures you're probably spending lots of money on a high-end photographer and yeah they're gonna make you look even smoother and prettier in post when they're taking those pictures but it tends to be a better result when you have a little bit of when you have quality makeup you don't have to work as hard in post does that make sense am i rambling so i definitely made myself look a little bit more tan maybe i'll put a little bit of this stuff sheared out all over my chest just to get myself to look cute and bronzed i just kind of shear it out nicely to make it myself to match a little bit better all right so now we're going to do a little bit of concealer Oh, I totally forgot to do that color corrector, but I think I'm going to be okay. I don't. I can live without the color corrector. I don't want to use shape tape because it's going to be too crazy. If I'm feeling too dry, if really dry, I might use my Urban Decay Naked Concealer. That one's really nice and moisturizing. That's one of my favorites for moisturizing. I think I'm going to do my favorite bridal mixture, which is a mis mixture of the NARS Radiant Creamy and the and the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Claw. So I'm going to do a mixture of those two as my concealer. And this is just kind of to flatten out that under eye area. My number two is totally kicked. And that's cool. It's good to know that I've used up a product here and there. Oh, it looks so pretty. Look at that under eye. I am so radiant and flawless. I didn't use a ton of concealer because I'm trying to look somewhat natural. But since I'm not using a ton of concealer for my setting power, I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder. This is a perfect setting powder if you don't want to look too heavy with the powders. This is a great powder for dry skin and mature skin and just kind of like a really finely milled powder that doesn't look like powder when you put it on, which is why, what I like about it. It's super easy to, to use too because it's a pressed powder. Loose powders are awesome and essential, especially for oily skin, but even like like longevity. This doesn't offer a ton of long longevity as unless your skin is very dry. If your skin's pretty dry, your, your makeup's probably gonna last all day anyway, except if it, you're wearing a lot of moisturizing makeup and your skin is eating it all. This is a, this is a good powder for dry skin to help your makeup last longer. To get your makeup to last longer, powder is kind of a necessity and the, and you kind of need to make things look a little bit cakey in the beginning to ensure that all your makeup that you're putting on is gonna last, it's set in place, it's not gonna move. I feel like the skin looks pretty good. Liking the outcome so far. And because this is a bridal look, the next step is an essential step. I absolutely need to put on my Hourglass Ambient Light Dim Light Powder. And I put that all over the high points of my face. This is like a great powder that helps set your makeup, smooth your makeup, give it like a little bit of a blurring effect, and just gives you overall a glowy appearance. I don't know about you, but for bridal, like I feel like all the bridesmaids and all the brides need to look a little glowy, a little radiant. Not like oily glowy, but just like innocent and pure and I'm a little angel and I look glowy and you can't see my pores. Can you see my pores? You can't see my pores. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it kind of smooths out any kind of crepiness. Sometimes it even smooths out some wrinkles too. I love this powder and I definitely believe that is an essential when it comes to bridal looks. Okay, so I think we're ready next for bronzer. But first we need to get a little bit of a refill of our rosé here. Cheers to that. I don't know if I actually mentioned this in my uh, favorites video, like I did my 2018 favorite makeup video, which is my makeup favorite makeup of all time video at the same time because I'd never ma made like a yearly roundup of favorite products video before, but I think I mentioned this bronzer as my favorite. I think this is this might actually be my favorite bronzer. This is the Malibu Soleil bronzer from Becca. I just have it inside this palette. I don't have it as a single because I'm not a rich person. Yeah, I'm just not a rich person. <laughs> I often love to use like these tapered kind of brushes for my bronzer. 
especially because they fit into the smaller pans like this nicely. So I guess I'm just gonna chat while I'm doing my bronzer here. I am kind of doing it in a, in a three shape, like a three around the face. I'm going to the cheekbone a little bit, into the jawline a little bit, but like a light sheer wash kind of around the outside perimeter of the face all over. I love this bronzer because it makes me look tan. It's really finely milled, so it's easy to not overdo it. It smooths on to the skin very nicely. Even though I've hit pan on two other bronzers this year, I do see myself possibly hitting pan on this one too because it's so pretty. I love this bronzer. I use a lot of bronzers. My bronzer collection I feel like is pretty under control. I don't have any like bronzers that I don't use. I do consistently use basically all the bronzers I have, except for one that I got before my no buy year that I've been saving to use for a video. <laughs> a first impressions video of makeup I bought before my no buy year started that I still haven't tried. Does that sound like an interesting video to you? Because it's coming. So yeah, spreading some out on my neck to give myself more of a glow. I never have I ever gotten a spray tan. I'm pretty active in the in the summertime. I'm really excited that summertime is basically almost here. Every day gets a little bit warmer. I've been getting into running again. I'm a little upset that I didn't lose as much weight as I'd like to. I haven't gotten as fit as I'd like to in time for this wedding just because it's a May wedding, you know, and I haven't... I've, I've done a little bit of exercising throughout the winter, but like not anything crazy, nothing intense. Should have gotten a membership, like a gym membership, but YOLO, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, I think I look bronze. That looks good. I'm going to take my Smith brush and I'm going to use my um, Infinity Deep palette from Linda Hallberg. And I'm going to use this color called Umber as my contour. Ooh, it's <laughs> pigmented. That's okay, I think I can blend that out, I hope. I put some into my hairline there. Really give myself a little sculpt. I'm making myself look a little bit more Kardashian-y than I'd like, but I think I can blend this out. Uh, I'm definitely making myself look pretty sculpted, if I do say so myself. That looks, that looks nice. I feel like that's pretty. So pretty. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use my favorite blush as my blush. This is Becca Flower Child. I feel like this is a nice peachy, kind of neutrally, but also a statement, just like a really pretty, like flushed blush. It's my favorite blush. <laughs> Was that too many adjectives? But yeah, I'm just putting that kind of on the apples and blending it out. It looks a little strong right now, but blush is usually the first thing to fade, so I tend to, for longevity's sake, go in a little harder with the blush. I feel like my cheeks look really pretty. And I think for highlighter, this is a little cliche, but I think it might be perfect for this look. I am going to use Becca Champagne Pop. Mine got crushed and I had to, ooh, ooh, I spilled some. Mine got crushed, so I had to repress it, and I think it's okay with the way I repressed it, but it, it is kind of still pretty brittle. This is also something that's in my project pan, so I'm trying to use this up. Yeah, for this kind of bronzy statement bridal look, this is, um, sometimes Champagne Pop look, reads a little too dark on me, but I feel like it's reading really nicely on me today. I am also considering um, adding a little bit of my Rihanna highlighter, my Fenty highlighter. I'm gonna put a little bit into my inner corners of my eyes there too, just for fun. I think I need a little something lighter in my inner corners though. So yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of my Fenty highlighter in the shade Hustla Baby on top of the highlighter that is already here. I like this highlighter a lot because it's like a beautiful warm champagne-y that's 
peachy champagne kind of color and it's very blingy. Definitely looks really summery and blingy. I love it. I think I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush and put a little bit onto my eyebrow bone there too. And I want like a lighter color in my inner corners. I think I'm gonna put a little moonstone in there. I have this mini of moonstone from Becca and I think I'm gonna put a little bit of that into my inner corner. Yes, that gives a little bit of light to the eyes for sure. And now I need to do my drop shadow underneath my eyes. My go-to shadow when I do drop shadows for bridal is antique bronze from the Renaissance palette. So I'm gonna pull that out for that purpose. But I think I'm also gonna add a little bit of a brightening color underneath the eyes too. Okay, so first off, I'm just gonna add a little bit of like a lighter color shadow underneath to help me blend out any drop shadows that I add. I'm, I'm using like a thicker kind of rounded pencil brush, I guess you could call. And then I'm gonna take an actual pencil brush. This one's from Sigma. And I'm going to go into Antique Bronze from the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. As you can see, out of all the colors in here, I have dug into Antique Bronze the most, which I think is kind of like out of the ordinary for a lot of people, but I use this shadow for drop shadows. I feel like it's a beautiful drop shadow color. I could leave it right there. I feel like that's a really pretty drop shadow color, brings a lot of attention to the eyes, but I wanna make it a little bit more dramatic. This is especially nice to do with drop shadow because sometimes the area right near the lash line comes out a little crepey, so the drop shadow kind of covers that up. So going back in with the, the light shadow again to blend that out, those colors together. And I think that looks really pretty. If I, I feel like the eyeliner is going to hold on just fine, but if I was really worried, I would set the eyeliner with a black shadow, but I feel like it's going to hold up fine, so I'm not going to do that. Sometimes that makes my eyes a little bit too dry feeling, but I feel like my skin makeup is pretty much done. Like, my highlight is beaming for sure. I think I made myself a little bit too, too dark, so tomorrow when I do this makeup again, I might not use as much of this darker shade of the Dior foundation. I feel like this looks beautiful. So all there's left to do is my lipstick, my eyelashes, and my mascara. And I like to do my setting spray first before I do all that stuff just because sometimes I like to add even more highlight after that. And sometimes if you put the setting spray on top of your mascara, it makes your mascara run. So I do it first. For bridal, I always use these two setting sprays. This is Max, MAC Fix Plus. This is Scandian, Scandinavia, the bridal makeup spray. It's basically the same thing as Urban Decay All Nighter. So if you have Urban, Day, Urban Decay All Nighter, this will work exactly the same as this, but that's just what I have right now. So first I'm gonna use my, Urban, uh, my MAC Fix Plus. This is an amazing and essential tool for bridal because it takes down the powdery look of your makeup and it makes you look super glowy. And it helps things last too. So I'm gonna hit my face with this first. I don't know if you can tell, but I like already look much glowier. <laughs> and I think that's really pretty. So now I'm gonna hit it with the second spray. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm feeling pretty snatched, feeling pretty good. So now I'm gonna uh, put some mascara on my lashes. And I think what I'm gonna end up using is some of my favorites. I don't always curl my lashes before I put mascara on, but this is a special occasion, so I will this time. And first I'm gonna go in with a thinning mascara, so this is just gonna like lengthen and separate my lashes. And this is the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara. It does add a little bit of a curl, so I'm gonna use it for that. It might be almost time to retire this mascara because it's like, I don't know, coming up pretty thin. I remember this being a lot juicier of mascara and I've, I think I've had it for a while. It might be almost time to retire it. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, this is uh, one of my favorite mascaras of all time. This is Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir. This mascara is so thickening, you don't even need lashes. Even on my thin, little, baby, fine lashes that I have on my face. So that's my eyelashes so far. Actually, I might even be able to get away without lashes, but I am gonna add lashes, cause it's a special occasion, gotta have lashes. So let me go choose a pair and I'll be right back. So I'm thinking the lashes that I'm gonna pick are these Coco Lashes in the style Honeybee. I really want something that's like glam, but not too glam, thick, but not too thick, wispy, a little bit wispy, but still like glam and thick and visible. Uh, somewhere, something that's kind of like in between, you know? And I think these are gonna work just fine. So let's pop those on. Gonna use my uh, House of Lashes Lash Glue. These are really, uh, when it comes to long all day events, like a wedding and you want longevity, this is a really good lash glue. Not only that, but it's also latex free, so it's not gonna irritate your eyes as much as some latex uh, lashes might. So I'm trying to coat the lash band thoroughly, especially on the corners where it tends to peel up. I'm gonna give it a couple, a minute or two to get tacky, get a little bit more dry. I don't blow on it because that's um, less sanitary than I would like things to be. So I'm just waving it around in the air. By the way, these are lash applicators from Sephora. But there are the lashes on. They're a little bit more dramatic than I thought they'd be, but they still gonna leave them on for today. I feel like they look very nice. So the last thing that there is to do is just slap on this lip. So I got a brand new lip in my last BoxyCharm. This one is from Dose of Colors and it's the color Kiss of Fire. And I feel like it's a perfect match to the dress I'm gonna be wearing. So I'm gonna slap this on, see how it looks. Hopefully it's gonna be a perfect match. It's like a red, it's like a candy apple red. It's a little bit more pink than I'd like. It's, the dress I'm wearing is like a candy apple red. So I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm still gonna use this lip. I think it's a, still a really pretty color and it matches with this look pretty nicely. But I think I'm just gonna add a like a red lip liner to go with it. So I have a great lip liner in the shade Cherry, but I think it's gonna be perfect with this look. So I'll slap that on now. Honestly, I should have all uh, started this look off, uh, doing this lip off with the Cherry lip liner anyway, because having a lip liner is gonna help with the longevity of your lip color in general. Like lip liners just help things stay in place a little bit better. So here's MAC Cherry. I'm gonna slap that on. I think that's beautiful. I think that's gonna match with the dress perfectly. And I feel like if I were to put on the lip liner first and then go in with the Dose of Colors lip, then it wouldn't be as bleedy and it wouldn't look as bad. But I feel like this is gonna work for tonight, so. That is it guys, that is the finished look. This is uh, basically the look I'm planning on wearing to my sister's wedding. I think when I put my hair down, my lashes don't look as big and dramatic and glamorous, but I think this is a really pretty look. I, it matches with my dress nicely. I think I'm gonna do my nails too. Paint them red to go with my red dress and keep the whole theme going. <laughs> I hope you really liked watching this. I hope you got some like tips and tricks. I know um, this time of year is like pretty much uh, wedding season. So uh, perhaps this is informative. I hope so at least. I feel like this could be helpful for a lot of people. Yeah, I did kind of pepper in a couple like little tips and tricks for bridal makeup looks too into this video. So. I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope you liked watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if you're planning on going to a wedding at some point this summer, if you're having a wedding of your own, if you're gonna be a part of a wedding party or if you're just kind of going or, or if you're not, if you'd like to, if you're a fan of weddings. I feel like they're a little bit stressful. I feel like they're a lot and I kind of, you know, as a makeup artist, I am a part of weddings a lot. Maybe just the association for me with a work, with weddings is uh, part of what makes it a little bit more stressful for me, but they're still fun, of course they're fun. I mean, 
they're good vibes, you know? So I hope you liked this look uh, and I hoped you liked hanging out with me. I really liked hanging out with you. And until next time, I hope you subscribe to catch some more content, some more makeup artist content. Probably my first tutorial. It, you know, started out as a get ready with me, but I kind of like did a lot of instructional stuff in this video. So I hoped you, that was fun for you. I hope that helps you in the world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Cheers to that. Bye.